Hey, and welcome back to another video from my Vintage Tech Showcase playlist, the playlist of videos where I showcase older electronic devices, uh, mainly phones and iPods, in a form of retro style review. And what I have for you here today is the Motorola V60 from uh, 2001. So this is a uh, 21 year old phone as of uh, 2022. And uh, if you may remember, if you are a, um, a recurring uh, viewer on this channel, you may have uh, remembered that I got this phone in this video over here. Uh, it was a lot of uh, phones for $60. Uh, it was a really good deal considering there were some really valuable phones in there. And I've done a bunch of videos in the past week. Uh, if you're on this channel, you usually you know, you've probably already seen them, but as usual, they're all in the Vintage Tech Showcase playlist and the Repairs playlist. So you can go check them out and check that video out as well. Uh, this is a Motorola device from the early 2000s. Uh, it was a flip phone and it was really popular uh, back in the day, uh, especially its variants, the V60i, the V60g. Uh, this is the first one. This is the base model, the first variant from 2001. Uh, it was manufactured until around 2003 as well with uh, the variants coming out in 2002 as well. So this is a very solid, really tough, uh, not meant to be tough, not meant to be a rugged phone or anything. However, it, by chance, it is a really solid, really tough flip phone uh, from the early two, uh, 2000s. And uh, it kind of shows and we'll go over the design and all that stuff. And this was another workhorse of a phone from the early 2000s uh, for the uh, American uh, consumer. This is on the uh, AT&T network. And these phones, just like the V300, uh, the Nokia 52, uh, 52 uh, 8210 over there, the Nokia 8210, the 8290, 3390. Um these phones were workhorses of uh, the mobile networks back in the day. They were the basic phones. They were not luxurious. They were just the basic mobile phone and that's what made them great. There are a lot of these things around. This thing, uh, I have seen a few, uh, but mostly the V60i model is what's usually uh, for sale. This is the base model. There's not many of these around, but it's still, it's not a super rare phone or anything like that. And uh, we should we still should cover phones like these uh, without these phones uh, We we can't just like ignore them because they were the workhorses of the mobile networks back in the day And this one is a one in working condition as well It is plugged to its charger because the battery is really really weak. It's 21 years old. What do you expect? Um, and we'll be going into the usual details uh, on this retro style review. So as usual, uh, before jumping right in, don't forget to smash that like button down below as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm on Instagram, Discord, and Twitter, and you can follow me on those using the links down in the description below. And now let's jump right into this video, starting off by turning the phone on and then going from there. All right, so firstly, let's power this thing on. The power button is down here. Press the power button. The Motorola logo, Motorola V branding, AT&T. We'll uh, blank that. Uh, that was someone's phone number. Let's uh, blank that out and okay. Searching for network. So this is a CDMA phone. So there is no SIM card slot. So it's searching for network. Uh, I'm sorry, buddy. Your uh, network is long gone. That network does not exist anymore. So let's hit menu um, and uh, go back. So the exit button is on this side. Got to get used to that because usually it's on this side. So that is the interface. Anyway, before going into the interface, let's go over around this phone. Uh, let's Let's see what it's like in terms of build quality. Uh, the battery can last for a while without the charger. So let's close it up. So up front, uh, let's bring it closer here. Up front, we have uh, the uh, external display uh, that shows the number that's calling uh, you and uh, who, maybe who texted you and stuff like that. A basic external display, Motorola logo, V branding over here. Uh, the 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 shiny uh, chrome effect is still there. It has not faded. These phones were really well built. Those cr That chrome effect does not fade, uh, such as in modern phones, uh, which is really nice to see. It's still on here as well. Uh, we have the external speaker over there as well for uh, playback, uh, the external speaker. Moving on to the inside, let's open it up. So on the inside here, we have the internal speaker over here. Uh, we have Motorola branding. We have the display, which we'll talk about in a bit. The hinge, the buttons, as you can see there, they are very solid buttons, really 
built tough buttons. These are not the flimsy kind of buttons. Let me bring them closer, see if you can hear them. So yeah, very uh, tough feeling buttons. Uh, they are uh, the early 2000s, so uh, they feel really, really uh, solid there. Let's go back here. Um, and then we have the microphone cut out here, AT&T branding. Sometimes it says V60 on the, uh, on the international version, the non-locked version. Uh, so yeah, let's close that back up again. And uh, we have, that's uh, basically the front and the insides of the phone. So now moving on to the uh, left side of the phone, we have our volume keys over here. As you can see, uh, those are the volume keys. And over here, we have a extra button that is the smart key. That thing can actually be paired to any function you want on the phone uh, for quick access in the settings. And I'll show you that later. That is really impressive for a phone from that era. Uh, moving on to the other side, we have another quick key. Now this thing cannot be paired uh, to anything you want, but it's voice note so you can make a quick voice recording of something and I'll show you that as well so quite nice to have quick access keys on both sides really really impressive for such an old phone moving on to the top of the phone we have the uh, 2.5 millimeter headphone jack over there and uh, we have a bunch of uh, vents and stuff uh, and we have the uh, antenna as well the button to release the lock at the back there and then moving on to the bottom of the phone we have uh, the uh, proprietary charger, the Motorola charger. Let me, let me get that charger here, the proprietary Motorola charger. I forgot what this thing was called off the top of my head. I'll put it over here when I uh, find it. This proprietary jack and charger, and we have the multimedia connection uh, as well, uh, if you want to plug it to a computer, and that is that. Moving on to the back of the phone, so it's a uh, aluminum back. It's aluminum. It's really thin aluminum, but it's still really high quality and it's super smooth. And whoever used this phone uh, back in the day has used it really carefully. It's not scratched at all. This is easily scratched, but uh, whoever used this phone back in the day has not scratched it. Because I remember this phone came with, uh, let me quickly grab that. Uh, oh, here it is. This phone came with like a belt clip, as you can see here. Uh, this is the belt clip for this phone. And that uh, I mentioned went at the back. I was kind of wrong uh, at the top. I said, I called that thing a vent, I think. That's not a vent, that's the belt clip lock. So as you can see there, uh, this phone existed on someone's belt for a long time. So hence uh, the back cover is not that scratched. He probably put it in his belt each time he didn't want to use it. So that's why it's not scratched. We have uh, a antenna extender port there as well. As you can see there, you can put that, you can put something in there a connector and extend the antenna or increase the range um, that usually is a cap on it but it's missing on this phone and yeah that's just a quick go around of the phone itself so now let's go back into the phone we'll talk about the specs and then jump into the interface as well all right so let's get rid of the tech specs section for this and uh, then move on from there uh, tech specs as in tech specs there isn't really tech here it's a uh, pretty basic phone so uh, just the uh, st the call logs and all that stuff the minimum storage that has and of course the display uh, on the front and the back so the display as you can see there is of course a monochrome graphic display it's uh, 96 96 this way by 64 pixels, so 96 by 64, 96 by 64, uh, with a three by two uh, aspect ratio. It also has a secondary display, which is also 96 by 16. So uh, the one there, as you can see there, 96 by 16, uh, it's used to display uh, whatever, who's calling you, the who's texting you, and now it's just showing the network, as you can see there, it's showing AT&T Wireless, uh, even though it cannot find old the old AT&T network, it still shows that. So no uh, SIM card slot, this is a CDMA device. This has 500 entries in the phone book, so quite a lot more than the Nokia we reviewed that day, uh, the 8210. That thing had 250, as I remember. This has 500 entries in the phone book. Uh, 10 dialed, uh, these are the call records. 10 dialed, 10 received, plus 10 missed calls as well. 
25 phone book voice tags. So in the phone book, you can have 25 voice tags and nine quick access voice tags as well. Uh, of course, this thing has no camera, as you can see there. Uh, and uh, it also has a built-in composer for ringtones. Uh, they're monophonic ringtones. And uh, yeah, I guess that's the straightforward uh, technical specifications uh, for this phone. It has an extended antenna, as you can see there, for better range. These phones at the time did not need extended antennas. However, it's still better for the extra range. Uh, the Nokia 8210 is a bit older there, uh, but it didn't have an extended antenna. But uh, for some CDMA networks and all, they had uh, extended antennas on Motorola's and no one really bothered with these. They were really tough as well. They don't easily come off or break. And even if they do, the phone still works perfectly fine. So let's jump into the interface next and talk about the interface. So coming in for a close up with the display, the backlight, as you can see there, it's it's sort of dim over time. It's been dimmed over time. Um, as you can see, they're quite dull. Uh, but in bright sunlight conditions, you can see these displays really, really well. Um, but uh, the backlight is needed for nighttime use. So we have message and phone book. We can actually change these using in, in the settings to whatever you want. So a lot of customization for this phone, actually quite a lot. Really impressive for a phone uh, from uh, 2001 with so much customization. We have uh, the uh, voice notes and then we have whatever you want you can put here uh, in the settings uh, quick access smart key uh, really really impressive so you can actually change these as well so let's go to menu let's go straight forward to the settings and I'll show you the impressive settings this thing has so getting used to the select button and that's how we have ring vibrate phone status in call setup security and we have other settings that's where everything else is personalized main menu we can have recent calls and phone book on that side and we have date book and all of these stuff in the main menu, what you wanna grab and what you wanna get rid of as well. Let's go back uh, and keys, that's where you select the uh, the the keys. Now the left phone book key, uh, the le left, this one, that's the phone book and right is messages. You can change that here to change. Let's do, uh, let's do settings. So select settings and uh so that the right this this button over here is now settings we can change the left as well now it's on phone book let's leave it like that and here's the smart the smart is the uh the key over here so that's currently on phone book we can change that to let's do shortcuts voice notes uh, recent calls, voice note settings. These are all the options available. We can do date book. So that quickly goes to date book. And I'll show you that later. So you have three settings over there. <clears throat> Going to the back, uh, main menu and keys. These are your personalization options. Quite impressive for the time, uh, honestly. And then we have initial setup and network and uh, car settings as well. You have some car settings for when you're driving, hands-free, blah, 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 power off delay, charger time, uh, back, a headset, uh, initial setup, stuff like that. So quite a lot of settings. So let us let me show you. So as you can see, we have settings because I changed it. And now if you click this, which should be date book. So yeah, there you go. That's the date book or AKA the calendar. Uh, I don't know why they call it date book, but yeah, you can add things to the calendar as well. So I guess a calendar that you can modify is a date book. So yeah, really impressive uh, <laughs> customization there. Not even certain Nokia's had all that customization. Now, one thing that uh, this phone doesn't have is games. As I, I can find, as I can't find, there are no games on here. So we have ring, vibrate, phone status. Uh, what's in phone status? So telephone number, battery meter, we can view battery gives you uh, the battery percentage, even though it already mentions it there, but this is more precise. So a more precise battery percentage. Uh, the battery is weak, so it's not accurate. You have telephone number as well. <clears throat> in call setup, uh, security, we can set a passcode or lock applications, talk secure, restrict calls, new passcode, etc. etc. Uh, other settings we already showed you, ring vibrate, etc. etc. So that is the settings. You can go into the menu here. Um, and uh, as you can see, there are no games on this thing whatsoever. We have settings, voice notes, messages, date book, phone book, recent calls. Uh, that is all under the main menu, uh, voice notes as well. And yeah, that's basic, pretty basic interface as you saw there. Uh, no games, kind of a bummer, but uh, hey, uh, not everyone needed that back in the day, but Nokia dominated in terms of games because everyone likes Snake and Space Impact and all that good stuff. Uh, let's uh, go into the, uh, the, the tones here. Let's play out some tones. 
let's uh does that do anything what are the what what tones do we have here uh motor because everyone talks about nokia tones no one really talks about motorola tones and like i said this has a composer as well so you can make your own tones here we go so that's the composer uh how do you change the uh tones i think it's under personalization other settings personalize um where's the tones for this thing network car settings hmm that's strange where is the f uh, wait a minute so it should be under ring vibrate alert route loud ring loud ring detail my tones is this what it is uh aha uh -huh, here we are so calls comparacita change there we go make sure volume is max here let's go back make sure oh we can use this to move around as well i forgot to tell you that we can use that to move around let's make sure the volume is max yes it is the max is seven menu let's go into oh why are we doing that we have quick settings over here um we have ring vibrate uh loud ring detail that's what they call it and uh change so here we go these are the vibrates So as you saw there, those are the ringtones that are available and you can use the composer there to uh, compose whatever you want as well. But they're not as popular and well known as the Nokia ringtones. But for someone who used Motorola phones back in the day, uh, that probably brought back some nostalgia. So now let's go and go ahead and talk about battery and power. All right, so let's take this off and we'll power this thing off. Also, I found out, uh, I just remembered off the top of my head, some models like the V60i and the V60G, I think, uh, actually had games. This is the base model, the original V60, so it didn't have games. So uh, just so you know, press this button to release the back. Um, usually, how do I do that? All right, so I got it open. It's a bit hard to do that with uh, gloves on. So we have the battery over here. Uh, this is the SNN 5683A, the Motorola SNN 5683A. Uh, on some websites, it says it's the SNN 5704. Uh, they're all the same. They're just different, uh, different serial numbers. Uh, this thing is a uh, 780 milliamp hour battery. As you can see there, it says 780. That is 780 milliamp hours. Um, it's a lithium ion battery with uh, obviously a removable lithium ion battery. Uh, some places it says it's a 700 milliamp hour. I guess the other version is 700. This is 780. Please come out. I, okay, there we go. Uh, this one is 780. So uh, SNN uh, 5683A. However, this was not the battery that was in this phone. Let me Let me bring that one here. I think this was the battery that was already in the phone, but this is completely different one, different one as well. SNN 5705B. This one is, uh, I think, about, I can't find it, but yeah, it's probably 700, 780, something like that. They're all identical batteries. This one's just 780, uh, as you can see there, 3.6 volts. Uh, this phone had a standby time of around 130 hours, say so the, by the website, but I doubt it. These, origin, these old uh, phones easily had uh, better battery life than just measly 130 hours, probably around 200 to 300, 250 to 300 hours of standby time. And it says the talk time is just three hours highly doubt it these phones with the monochrome display 700 milliamp hour battery about 
four to five, maybe even five and a half, six hours of talk time easily on the CDMA network. Uh, back then, it was really hard uh, to actually get um, like proper values for battery tests and stuff. Back in the day, there were no, uh, there was no GSM Arena, there was no phone dog, there was nothing to actually test these out. So oh yeah, the the that was it was pretty hopeless in terms of uh, actually getting proper numbers. But no way in hell that is 130 hours and three hours. More like 300 hours and four to six hours ish. So as you can see there, it has no SIM card slot. Uh, it is a uh, CDMA phone. It's also manufactured in Mexico, made in Mexico over there. Uh, Motorola's Mexico factory. Let's put the case back on. And again, this one is sometimes a bit tricky to put back on as well. So in terms of additional features, as I showed you, the main additional features on this are the uh, the smart key and the, the voice notes button, the really quick smart keys and stuff. And uh, you can also change these buttons. Some really good customization that even some Nokia phones didn't have. Apart from that, there's nothing else. I mean, it's a basic CDMA flip phone from the early 2000s. What else can you expect from it? It's also uh, really well built, like I mentioned earlier, a solidly built phone. Uh, but apart from that, um, yeah, I guess there's nothing much else I can say about this thing. Uh, basic flip phone, a workhorse of the industry back in the early 2000s. Uh, that's why I wanted to cover this. Uh, we should not always just cover the, the interesting, unique phones. We should also cover the phones that were mainstream and what, every, what everybody owned because they're the main reason these networks and stuff existed. And they're the main uh, workhorses of the uh, industry, the mobile industry back in the day, the day-to-day -day user's phone. So yeah, this was the Motorola V60, the original Motorola V60, not the V60i or the V60G, uh, the one without games, uh, the first model, 2001 Motorola V60. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video as usual. And if you honestly did, uh, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up on this video. And also uh, don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm on Instagram, Discord, and Twitter. And you can follow me on those using the links down in the description below. Thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video.